Happy day to all. This is Nivedita, founder of Shriyahana Physiotherapy Academy. And our today's topic will be stress strain loading in connective tissues. So getting into the topic, I would like to explain the concept of elasticity first. Any object or any material that we take will have microscopically few molecules within them. Between these molecules, there are present certain forces called the cohesive forces that keep them binded together. Okay, So whenever it is, uh, the material is subjected to an external force, what happens is these molecules will expand and again come back to their original position. So this is called as elastic property of a material. So in the same way when you take the bone, for example, this is the part of the bone, here it is open so that I can show you the internal arrangement uh, that is present within the bone. This is the structure that withstands the external force and prevents the bone from breaking up to a certain extent. So when this kind of stress and strain increases, the bone comes to a point of failure where it will further not withstand the pressure and it will break. So coming to stress, stress is nothing but it is the force that is acting per cross-sectional area of a material. So uh, stress is actually measured like pressure only. Same uh, force applied by the area. So that will be the formula where it is shown here. Stress is the force applied by area and it is measured in megapascals. Coming to the topic of strain. Strain is nothing but the change in length that will be produced in an object when it is subjected to an external force. The percentage of change in length that an object undergoes is called as strain. And it is measured with the formula strain is equal to L2 minus L1 divided by L1 where L2 will be the new length and L1 will be the original length. Let me demonstrate to you the property of stress and strain uh, with the help of this rubber band. See what happens when I apply an external force. It lengthens and again comes back to its original form. So stress is nothing but this force that I applied on this material is called as stress. Okay? It is very simple. The force that I am applying that is acting on this material is known as stress. And this is measured in megapascals. Okay? So now passing on to strain. What is strain? Strain is nothing but this is the normal original length of the rubber band. So when I put the pressure and expand it, the new length, the percentage of change in length is called as strain. Okay? The percentage of change in length is strain and the unit will be percentage. And now passing on to loading, I would like to explain you the concept of loading with the example of this putty clay. This one we use it for strengthening, you all would be knowing. There are different kinds of loading. The first one that I am going to tell you is the tensile loading. Tensile loading of a material is nothing but two forces acting in opposite directions in the same line of action. What they will cause? Distraction within the object. So this is the thing that is happening in the tensile loading part. What happens? There is a distraction that is created within the material. Distraction force. So the example of tensile loading would be uh, the Achilles tendonitis, very commonly seen in people who start uh, running without proper uh, training. So when you don't train a muscle properly and start running, what happens is the tendon it is repeatedly subjected to this tensile force. So it results in Achilles tendonitis. I hope you would have now understood what is tensile loading with the help of this demonstration. When the stress and strain that is being put up on the connective tissue is less, then the tissue can deform and again come back to its original but when it exceeds a limit that is the ultimate stress the ultimate stress is nothing but the point at which the tissue fails to withstand the stress the ultimate strain is nothing but the point at which the tissue fails to withstand the strain so whenever a tissue is subjected to stress and strain to some extent the tissue can again come back to its original position. When it exceeds beyond a certain limit, then the tissue will break down. Suppose this is the original size of the object. When I subject it to compression force, two forces acting in same direction along the same line of action. See what happens, the object is getting compressed. So this is what happens with our connective tissues with, in case of compressive loading. 
So the common day-to-day -day example of compressive loading that occurs within our body would be whenever we try to lift a heavy object, you can uh, just feel it when you do that. Your spine gets compressed due to the compressive loading that occurs within the vertebral bones. I hope this example would have been clear. You can try lifting a heavy object and feel what is compressive loading. So the next concept here would be the shear loading. Shear loading is nothing but two forces act in parallel directions but with the opposite line of action. See, see what happens? Watch clearly. I am applying two forces in parallel direction. Okay? In the opposite line of action. Okay? So what happens? The body is subjected to shear force. A common example of shear force that is acting within the body would be uh, that during weightlifting, when we try to lift a heavy object with the lumbar flexion, by doing lumbar flexion, the position becomes stooped. So in stooped posture, when you try lifting this one, this heavy object, the vertebra, they always undergo this shear force. It is the anterior shear force that acts in this part of the activity. It is, so it is always advised to stay neutral when you lift heavy objects. That is without going into stooped posture, you can try being neutral and lift the uh, heavy object by flexing at your knees. So the next concept would be the, the torsional loading. In torsional loading, the force applied will be acting perpendicular to the long axis of the bone or the structure. So it is twisted like this. Whenever this tibia is subjected to torsional loading, it undergoes a spiral fracture. See, torsional loading. Okay. To the long axis, it is being perpendicular. So this torsional loading, it produces a spiral fracture in the tibia. There is one more kind of loading called the bending force. Whenever an object is subjected to this bending force, what happens is both the compression kind of loading and the tensile loading occurs within the object. So for example, in human body when we take, uh, it is the metatarsal fracture, it is the metatarsal stress fracture that is the best example of the bending force. So this metatarsal stress fracture is more common in sprinters. I hope these examples would have been clear to you. Thank you.